When we last left off in part one of Groundwork with a Yearling, I was just starting to send Shooter around the round pen with the saddle pad and stir single on. If you guys want to see what else I'm working on with my long yearlings to prepare them to be started under saddle as a two-year-old in the spring, stick around. I'm going to share some of those techniques with you right now. All right, welcome back to Becky Amy Horse Training. And I'm sorry I had to split this video up into two parts, you guys, but the Pivo continued to lose me over and over again. And I just had to set it up in a new position to be able to finish the video. So I thought it would be a good breaking point to start over again with a new part to this video. Now, I send him around on the line and I don't do a lot. Like, I'm not trying to work him in the ground. I'm just teaching him how to move out away from me, go around in a circle, hold his balance, go around on a line. You know, this is the get acquainted with the round pen sort of stuff. You know, they don't just come into the round pen and know how to do this stuff. This takes a little bit of education here, getting them comfortable with it, some turnout time in here. As I send him around, I'm not asking him to go to the rail for one I really don't want him to balance on the rail and for two if I let him go all the way to the rail the pivo is going to lose him and that's what I have found in my experience of using it so I'm keeping him kind of away from the camera as much as I can here and I'm sending him around I don't really care too much that the saddle pad is slipping just a little bit I, I'm not too worried about that. If it ends up sliding, fall, falling off of him, it's okay. We're going to end up seeing how he reacts to it in the event that it does. So right here, I really wish I would have had him kick his hip over a little bit more as I faced him up to me. But that's okay. You know, we'll continue to add to those idiosyncrasies. This is the kind of horse that if I pick on him too much... He, he's not going to take it from me. I, I know that about his personality already. If you guys have seen other videos of him, he doesn't take a whole lot. I have to keep the sessions really short. I have to take whatever he's willing to give me and identify the try. So the first thing I do is I adjust that saddle pad. And anytime that I can adjust that saddle pad or kind of tweak on it, I know it's a pain in the butt. But it's something that it just gets them used to being handled more. They get desensitized to all that movement on them. I take this opportunity to back him up a couple of steps, a little bit of pressure on his nose, a little bit of pressure on his chest to get him to move those feet back. Little things like this are going to make big differences as he gets bigger, as he gets older and more set in his ways. Now, I didn't ask him to move away, so I'm going to correct him and bend him back around towards me. I go to gather up my lunge line. You're going to see that a lot in this video, constantly dropping my lunge line, regathering it up and putting it together. Now, one thing I'm trying to do here is I'm asking him to move his hip over and he wasn't given to pressure with that hand. So I swung my rope slightly just to ask him to move over and I got a nice little step. I asked him to move that front end over. All I'm asking for is one step across in front. I'm not asking him to move any other feet. And then here, I'm going to go to his hind end and I'm going to push with my hand about where I would have my leg to ask him to move over. I get him to move over. He keeps the front end more still on this side than he does on the other end. And then I ask him to move that front end back over, cross over with those front legs. And then I take him a step back to help remind him not to go forward. You do not want to let them go forward. It will create bigger problems down the line, which I have shown in other videos and I'll continue to show in more videos to come. It will just create more problems if you allow them to walk forward. Because what ends up happening is just like this. He's walking around in circles around me. That makes it really, really difficult to put the saddle on him. It makes it difficult to mount him. So I constantly keep those feet crossing over and making him think back and cross over rather than forward. Another thing is if they if they can, you know, want to run forward, run around you, there's more opportunity for them to drop their shoulder, push you, push on you, push over you, kick you as they go by. I don't want them to ever think that that's a way out. And so again, he's not kicking that hip over for me. 
I finally get it now by bending his head a little bit more. I release the pressure and I pet on him. I really like how he's cocking his leg in back there. He's really relaxed. He's okay with everything that I'm working on with him, but he's being a little bit dull here. I have to go to my elbow kind of in the ribs there to get him to move over. Um, I'm, I'm not really getting it, so I have to go to the end of my rope and kind of just spank him there to move that hip over. Now, again, I didn't want him to walk in a circle around me, so you can see how this can be a problem long-term if we allow them to keep going in a circle like that around us. So I want to keep that front end straight and still keep those feet in place, and I was just asking for the hind end to move around. So I move back up to the front end, I get the feet to cross over in front, I give him a nice release. And then I'm, I'm going to ask him again here. He wants to cock a leg and back again. I'm asking him to move over and he's just being kind of dull again. Like, you, you know, just, I mean, there really is no other way to describe it. He's just being kind of dull about the whole thing, kind of holding his ground. And I would wager to say a little bit of that has to do with living with two other Colts the same age as him. So he hasn't quite separated me from them, okay? Like, he's used to standing his ground. He can be pretty bossy in that pen. He may not necessarily realize yet that, hey, this person is my leader. This person is telling me what to do. In the pen, when he's turned out with the other two horses, he doesn't necessarily have to do what they tell him to do. So I need to distinguish that now. And that's why these exercises are so incredibly helpful at this stage of his life. Can you imagine doing this when he gets a little bit more age on him and he gets a little bit more size on him? You know, I'm, I'm breaking through that, that, you know, that uh, maturity level right now while I can still really mold it and change him a little bit and work on that soft wiring on him a little bit. We already know he's going to be a little bit stingier and, and we know we're really going to be able to speed up this colt and he's got really quick feet. Um, but he's kind of playing the dull card because in the pen he can be pretty bossy with his friends and he doesn't have to be. And he's clearly not afraid of me whatsoever. And so I have to use the rope there a little bit to get him to move that hip over for me. I always release the pressure. I go back to petting on him. He's got a hoof cock most of the time. He's moving these front feet over and he's crossing them really nice for me. I'd like to see his head a little bit lower, but you know, it is what it is. You know, this is one of the few times I've worked with him in the round pen in the last, you know, eight months. I, I can't expect miracles to happen in this one single session as cold as it is. And so I'm going to go ahead and send him out around away from me now. Let him get out away from me. Send him out. Point that rope towards his shoulder. Put my hand out in the direction I want him to go. Send him out at a trot. Again, this is all working on balance. We're not working him into the ground. This is just exercise, if you will. Moving his feet and legs, getting acquainted with the round pen, learning his space in here. Because you guys, when they come in here, they don't necessarily know their space when they come in. And they don't have the balance. And they'll bounce off the rails in this round pen and it's an accident. They don't do it on purpose. They don't run into stuff on purpose. So the earlier that I can teach him spatial recognition and balance on a 50, 60, 75 foot circle, the better off I'm going to be. So he goes, he takes that lope on his own and he kind of scoots around on his own. And I'm prepping him to change the other direction. I point with my left arm. I take my rope towards his hip. We change directions. I always want him to face towards me, obviously, with this rope on. You know, he takes a lope. He's picking up the correct lead right now, which is super. You know, that's a pretty good evaluation of how balanced he is. Uh, there are some horses that come in here and they can't take a correct lead or they crossfire the whole time they go around in here. So I don't spend a whole lot of time on making him go around in circles around me. I still want to make this a really good experience on him. I don't want to put a ton of pressure on those joints. I just want him to get used to, hey, this is how you go forward. This is how you go this direction. This is how you go that direction. This is how you change directions. When I bring him back into me, I adjust this saddle pad and I reach over him and I kind of hold on to it and I walk with him because he's not comfortable. 
he tells me he's not comfortable when he moves around. When he has a leg cock like he does right now, he is saying that he accepts what we're working on. I turn him around to face the camera a little bit better, but any chance that you can reach all over them, give them a hug, put your arm over their back, throw things up on their back, you know, you're really limited by your own imagination here. And ideally, you want to do it when their feet are still. You want to do it when they've got a leg cock, they're licking and chewing, and they're totally accepting what's going on. I work on both sides of him. That's how we're going to make this horse, you know, really user friendly is by really working through both sides of him, getting comfortable with both sides. You see him pick his head up and he looks around and he's looking at my hand back there moving, you know, all really good stuff. He's acknowledging, he's aware that I'm there, he's aware of what I'm doing, but he didn't move. And that is super. So I'm going to do a little exercise with him right now that he absolutely despises. He dislikes it so much. Um, if you were following us eight months ago or so ago, I was doing this with him when he was a little bitty guy and he hated it. So we've come a long way and I haven't practiced it very much, but the fact that he's accepting of it right now, you know, shows that we have some promise and Hopefully it will only get better as long as I do my part here. I try to start out petting his head, rubbing the rope on him. I walk with him. He'll let me take it over his head after I've rubbed on his face a little bit. I can't do it very aggressively yet. You know, I can't just flip the rope over his head and wrap it around. I got a nice foot cocked here. You know, his head is down. He's not putting his head way up in the air as much as he was when we first started. Big, big difference. Um, man, if if you guys haven't seen that, I'll try to find the video. I'll share the link in the description box because it was bad. He would not let me take this rope over his head at all. And so, A, this shows that there's hope for all of them. They can all make progress. You just have to give them some time to grow up and mature, and you have to be consistent in how you handle them. And you can also take this rope, you know, underneath his neck and around the body. You don't necessarily have to go up over his head. And he's accepting of it on this side, and he's always been more accepting of anything on his right side versus his left side. That's just how he's been from day one. All I'm looking for him to do is accept me, you know, taking this rope over his body, rubbing it behind his butt, bending his head around softly, you know, following his nose, moving his feet, allowing something to touch him all over. All of this stuff is going to get him really broke. And again, that much more user friendly. And the more I can get this stuff done while he's this size, the better off I'm going to be and the more advantage I'm going to have later on because I've been around this Colt's older brothers and they get to be pretty darn big and I'd rather work through this stuff now while he's this size than when he's 16 hands tall and you know 1200 pounds so you know I end this on a really quiet note he's gotten really soft I don't see a reason to send him out again um He's just, you know, I've got the head lowered now. It's not nearly as up high and as resistant as it was. Resistant as it was. Um, I'm getting pretty good footwork. You know, I don't want to push so hard on him that, you know, I push past a point and I get him frustrated and mad at me. So I'm going to go ahead and pull his saddle and drop it off of him. And when I pull it off... He steps away, and I just throw it on the ground. No big deal. Like I told you, it's an old saddle pad. It's a nylon sur single. I throw it on the ground, and I do that because I want him to experience that stuff on the ground. Sometimes they spook when stuff falls off of their back, okay? So I want him to be okay with that. But he goes to walk off. And I'm going to make him back up and I'm going to get after him a little bit right here. And what I should have done is grabbed my tack and put it back up on him again and pulled it off of him when his feet were still. That's what I should have done. And I was kind of kicking myself for not doing that. But instead, we had a pretty good backup session here. So we're going to quit with this. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.